Okay, yep. So welcome everyone to um, the last workshop in financial literacy for 2022. This one is Loan to Own, and we are um, excited to have um, Spencer back with us again today. Um, Spencer is uh, from PNC Bank, and he is going to lead us through the presentation today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we can take them as we as we go along. The materials and um, participant guide will be sent to you after the workshop. Um, so you have to worry about taking, you know, um, crazy notes or anything. All of this will be shared to you and it'll also be posted to our YouTube channel. Um, so Spencer, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Good morning, all. And thank you, Liz, uh, for the opportunity. I'm just going to introduce myself real quick. My name is Spencer Guillomet. I am the Community De Development Relationship Manager for PNC, as um, Liz mentioned earlier. I cover the New England area. Um, my job is to support and drive the bank CRA objective by helping to facilitate loans, investment, grants, and technical support to low and moderate income communities. Um, today workshop is entitled Loan to Own, and this is the first part, and we're looking to do a second part because it's, it's a very interesting topic, and I have a lot of information that I would love to share. But um, I'm going to go over our objective, um, overall objective with this um, um, workshop, and then we're going to present, and then obviously uh, uh, what I would love is, is part your participation. Any questions that you may have, you could stop me while I'm presenting, or we could do it later. Um, after I finish the presentation. Um, uh, Liz, if you could take the, this meeting has been recorded off let me see, so that I could read. I just took um, it off, perfect, I got it. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, okay, yeah, you got it. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Um, loan to own, though, our objective is to identify various type of installment loans. Um, second is to identify the factors lenders used to make home loan decision. Identify how federal, federal loans protect you when you apply for a loan. Identify the questions to ask when purchasing a car. Next slide. Um, again, it's to explain why installment loan costs less than rent to own services. Explain why is it important to be wary of rent to own payday loans and refund anticipation loan services. Um, lastly, God against predatory lending practice. So it's, it's, a, it's a packed agenda, <laughs> packed objective. So again, I will expect a lot of questions in, 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 in part one and part two. So to start, um, I will just pose the question to the audience. What do you know or want to learn about installment loan? You could share what you already know or what you're looking forward to learn based on the objective shared. Anyone? What do you know or want to learn about installment loans? I don't know anything, so everything will be helpful. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Tanya, yeah. So, uh, pretty, uh, a lot of good attention. Um, we're going to go over them, and I'm going to try not to run, um, take my time. And if you have a question, please stop me. Next slide. So the first thing is, what is an installment loan? It's, the definition is right there. A loan that is repaid and equal monthly payments slash installments for, for a specific period of time. So just in simple terms, it's a loan that you take from the bank or any financial institution, and they have a specific amount of um, installment that needs to be paid on a monthly for a period of time. Uh, one of the most popular installment loans, um, which is noted, is the, our cars, furniture, computers, and household appliances. Um, I don't know if anybody have purchased a car in the last couple of years. This is the best example that we could give you of what is an installment loan. Next slide. Secured installment loans have lower interest rates than unsecured loans. Um, secured installment loans require collateral. An example of a secure installment loan would be mortgage and home equity. So the word secured means that the loan is backed up by collateral. For example, the car becomes the collateral your house becomes the collateral. So that installment loan is secured. Next slide. But what is collateral? Um, what does collateral mean? 
It is an asset you own and pledge to the lender if you cannot repay the loan. If you are unable to repay the loan and the collateral is insufficient to cover the balance, you are still responsible for the remaining balance, any fees and interest associated with the law. So very important. A lot of the time people understand that if they can't pay the car, they, they send it right back to the, or, uh, to the lender or the lender repo the car, but they will have to do a final um, ledger. And if the car, if they are balances that left, you will still be um, in fees and interest, you will still be reliable for it, even though the car is the collateral um, or the, the what was pledged to repay if you cannot repay the loan. Next slide, please. By the way, any question on this particular, um, the collateral? So I just have a question. So if the car is say reproduced, repossess you mm -hmm. still owe you, you could still owe money on it is that what you're saying yes yes because there will be a final ledger um done and the ledger will have fees interest and 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 and, and so many other things that the bank or the, the the financial institution will um calculate and after they calculate if they find out the value of the car is less than what was owed they will send you a bill and they will tell you the this remaining balance is what you owe still owe and they'll go after you for that and it will be on your credit oh um, good point thank yeah. you sure um unsecured installment loan basically those are loans that are not secured by collateral they have tougher underwriting standards than secured loan example personal loan or private student loan so when you when an underwriter is um looking at doing an unsecured loan they they you know they look at more in details into your credit they look at more in detail into you know your past history because it's uh because there is no collateral. So if you if it's a personal loan, you take the loan, they can't come and take you as the collateral. You're not the collateral. So you they will have to find a way to make sure that you can pay that loan um and 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 based on your credit history or private student loan as well. Next slide, please. Um, cost of installment loans, very important. I'm, just, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go over these. We're not gonna really ask the question. So I'm just gonna basically uh, talk about the definition. Um, and, you know, turn things that you will see when you, um, from the financial institution, when you take an installment loan or um, abbreviation like APR, which stands for annual percentage rate, fixed rate loan, finance charges, and a valuable rate loan. So um, the answer is already there, so I'm not even going to ask uh, to, to answer them, but we just go over them real quick. A dollar amount the loan will cost, including interest, service charges, and loan fees, this is what you call a finance charges. Um, loan with interest rate that might change during any period of the loan, that is what we call variable rate loan. And, uh, and, and key words you're going to, to be able to, to remember this, uh, when you hear the, when you see the word variable, the word change normally is in the um, definition. Um, next slide, please. Um, An APR is cost of borrowing money on a yearly basis. Again, when you hear see the word yearly, you see the word annual. So when you're trying to understand what APR is, there will be the word yearly in the definition. So very key word when you look try to understand. Um, those terminologies. Um, lastly, is fixed rate loan. Loan with interest rate that stay the same throughout the term of the loan. Same is another word to look for in term, obviously. Um, it, it helps you, you understand that it's, it's, it's fixed rate. There's a term, there's a time it begins, there's a time it ends, and there's a fixed payment that is need to be done, installment payment throughout the term of that loan. Uh, any questions on this terminology? No. Perfect. Thank you. Um, next slide. Identified. Um, I guess we 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 don't have to do these ones. So these are those are things that are on the participation guide. You could just move forward. Um, yes. Okay. Why do borrowers prefer installment loans? Very clear. There are installment loans. There are um, lines of credit. There are different types of loans. So why do borrowers prefer, prefer an installment loan? It's very stated, stated clearly that clear monthly payment and amount 
prepayment period. It's very straightforward. You take it, it's for four years, it's for three years. This is how much you need to, to pay on a monthly basis that will include interest and principal. People love things that are simple. Installment loan is very simple. Normally, there are lower rates than credit cards. Um, credit cards rates are variable, um, and obviously it's, it's easy accessible, and also the rates are a little bit higher. So installment loans give you a lower rate than credit cards. And lastly, lower loan balance during loan term because payment includes principal as I alluded earlier. So it's not just you paying just interest, you also tap into your principal for a fixed period of time. Next slide, please. Um, purchasing or listing a car. Um, what are some questions to ask yourself when you're looking for a car? I don't know if anybody had an experience, recent experience versus purchasing a car. I have a recent, recent experience. I bought one last um, year um, and it was a good and a bad experience. So if I was not knowledgeable um, and understanding the difference, I would get, <laughs> um, lack of better words, I would get you know, screwed by the dealer because they are there to make their money. So it's very important to inform yourself and to know exactly what to expect and the type of questions to ask when you purchasing a car. Um, decisions to make is should I get a new or used car? Um, that's gonna based on what your needs are and your style and and, uh, and, 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 and and what you feel like is the best for your family. So should I get a new or used car? Should I list or buy a car? How much can I afford? Should I trade in my old car? Those are the questions you should ask before you actually make the decision and walk into that um, dealership. Um, so next slide, please. I'm sorry, could you pause there after just a moment? Yes. Um, I've heard many times that it's, it's better to lease a brand new car and then purchase it when the lease is up two or three years later than it is just to purchase a new car. Is that true? I want to agree, but, um, but you know, and everything, there are some, you know, pros and cons. Yes, if you lease a car, the, the benefit of listing a car is that you're going to get your monthly, most likely your monthly installment will be lower. Um, also, you will also have the opportunity to have a brand new car instead of go get a used car. So you don't have to worry about maintenance that much. Um, and when the term is over, the, normally the dealer will, or, or the bank will give you the option, you know, do you want to purchase the car? Um, so I agree with, with, with that. Yeah, it's, if you want a new car, it's better to this because there are some advantages that you have. But now the disadvantage is when you list a car, you have mileage limitation. So if you're a person that travels state to state and, 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 and put a lot of wear and tear in that car, you know, later on when you, when you go um, to purchase that car and give that car back, there will be some type of conversation because you have to stay within the guideline of the leasing terms. But a person who wants, a, who wants to like to drive a brand new car every two years, every three years, leasing will be the best, would be a better option. All right, thank I you hope. very much. That was, that mm -hmm. was helpful. Thank you. Um, car loans versus car leases. Consider ownership potential, like I mentioned, wear and tear, monthly payments, mileage limitation, auto insurance, cost, all of these things play an uh, effect when you're making the decision if you want to get a loan or if you want to lease the car. Next slide. So financing a car. The car is the collateral for the loan. The title indicates who owns the car. When considering a car loan, know the cost and how much you need to borrow. Shop for the best deal. Because when you're financing a car, you're saying, hey, I'm taking this particular piece of equipment um, and, and, I'm, and it's, 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 it's going to become mine. And, but you, uh, if it's going to become yours, you need to know the cost and how much you need to borrow. Very important because, you know, there are down payments that involve. There are um, so many different things, the fees and costs that involve. So you need to make sure that, you know, you do your um, 
to your due diligence and also shop for the best rate because you're going to be stuck with, with with installment loan and um and and if you don't shop for the best rate you might end up paying a lot of interest at the end of the the term next slide please where to obtain car loans very simple banks credit unions finance companies and car dealerships <clears throat> when dealers offer low interest rate the best deal they require a large down payment short loan term excellent credit history and participation fee just going to stop here for a sec um Again, when you're making the, the decision to go buy a car, you have to wonder, uh, know exactly how much money do I have available to put down? Because that basically will help you to get the best deal. The more you put down, the less of a loan you will take, and the pop, and most likely the, le the less of term um, you will have, you know, as a commitment to pay that loan back. So now, when you to get that. One of the things that you know you will need is excellent credit history, because you know people who get the lower rate have the best credit history. People who have the opportunity to put no money down have the best credit history. People who have the opportunity to pay less of a monthly um, installment have the best credit history. So when you want the best, you need to prepare yourself um, in advance. To, to be able to eligible for the best because your credit will be that that will determine um, if you could pay a large I mean if you pay no down payment if you got a if you get a short term or um, or participation fee which um, the dealer charges any questions on this particular um, slide so is a participation fee sort of the dealer saying I'm charging you a fee for just putting the deal together. Is that? Yeah, right? participation fee has so many things within it. Um, and it's actually extremely important to read what all those fees are. Uh, well, the fees could be, you know, um, the dealer has a, uh, is working as an ISO with a lender. And then they had, they getting a hit back on this particular deal for getting you a better deal. So for what I mean, working as an ISO, an independent self-organization where they have a form of partnership if I bring you X, Y, Z customers, if I bring you as many customers, you know, there's a fee that is, there's a, a, a fee that they charge you for giving you the best rate. And then they get a kickback from the lender as well. Ah, good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, next slide, please. Low interest rate, um, what you need to ask, um, that's about price of low rate financing advantages of paying with cash using your own financing, down payment requirement, limit on the length of the loan, the loan payments if due at the end of the loan. Um, this is very self-explanatory. Um, in order for you to get the low interest rate, there's other the things you should ask yourself um, to know what the best decision to make when you're making that purchase. Next slide, please. You have to learn about special promotion, ask about trading allowance, limit on special offer, meaning of dealer invoice. Um, there are always promotions going on, um, and it, it, it will be um, it will be not a smart um, decision to ask, because um, you know whatever the dealer is, do your due diligence research. There are some times that are great times to buy cars, um, special holidays, President Day. Um, that you know the the dealer has to you know turn out their inventory. They have to bring new new inventory in, and they they just start you know give different discounts. You know, it could be a trade in type of um, promotion. It could be a special offer promotion where you know they're giving you five thousand dollars towards something or two thousand dollars towards something. So timing also is important when you um making that decision because if you have the patience to wait when the promotion is hot and when something is in your advantage, you could save a couple of um, thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars um, when it comes to promotion. But the rule, the rule of thumb is to always ask what, what if there's any type of promotion going on at this particular time. Next slide, please. Auto service contract, which is a promise to perform or pay 
for certain repair or service, ask questions before buying auto service contract. Um, when you are at the dealer um, ship, it's extremely important to know what type of, once you walk out of the door, once you drive this car off the lot, what type of services or that's within the agreement. So um, auto service, that's what auto service contract is, a promise to perform or pay certain repairs or services. So some, some companies um, ask you to pay for extra warranty. Make sure you read exactly what is in that, 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 that warranty because a lot of the things that you might think it's simple might not be covered. Um, so it might be paying an extra $3,000, $5,000, $4,000 extra for something that, you know, that doesn't service, that doesn't service you as it should. So it's extremely important to ask questions when you get, um, when you purchase extra warranty or find out exactly what, uh, what auto service contracts are available the minute you drive the car off the lot. Uh, ask question before buying auto con contract, which is basically what I just alluded to. So again, whenever you're doing this transaction, ask, there's no dumb questions. Always ask questions because you want to know what you're getting yourself into because you are entering into a contract. And once you sign on the dotted line, sometimes, you, and most of the time, you cannot turn back. Next slide, please. Use call warranty protection. Um, that's, I don't know if you know, the last time you went to shop for a car, you will see the buyer guide. That basically tells you if you're buying a car with warranty, with a warranty, if you're buying it with implied warranties, or if you're buying it as is. You buy a car as is, the minute you walk, you're, you're, you're driving for the lot, there's no liability to the seller. Um, and then you need to know, you take a look at the buyer's card to see what comes with the car up with the purchase. Next slide. Alternative fuel vehicles. Um, before buying or listing, consider fuel type and availability, operating costs, performance, convenience, energy security, renewability, and emission. So now, you know, we with the uh, evolution of technology, we, we have so many different cars now that, that you know, does not require fuel. Um, and to some, that's very beneficial. I mean, I have a GL450, and every time I go to the gas station, if I could cry, I'll cry every year, you know, because to fill my tank, it's about $120. So if, you know, if you buy a car that is, um, you know, that, that's, that do not need fuel, like for instance, the Tesla, you know, there's also costs associated to it, but obviously it's a lot less and you don't have to worry about when gas go up and down. So that's a decision um and each individual has to make but moving forward um i believe more cars will be available on um, that are fuel that are not fuel liable and then you could use um the same te technology that tesla use any question on this particular subject no next slide please Well, this is um, very interesting, and I'm gonna take some time on this one. Structuring a car loan. Make as large a down payment possible. Consider the total cost of the loan. Give you an example, $15,000 at 4% interest for 36 months. So $15,000 is the price of the car. 4% interest is what the bank wants to give you the loan for. In the term, is for 36 months. So when you buy a car with structuring it, make as, as, as much doctrine as possible, that helps you reduce the term and also reduce the liability of money that you have to pay back. So that's, that again, that's a decision that, that's very important. So if you've been saving for a car, that's a good thing. Because again, the more money you put down, the less liability that you have with the bank and uh, the less term you probably will have to, um, to pay the total amount. Um, so to give you an example, for, uh, for the 36 months, $443 versus 48 months, which is $339 a month. So the total cost is between the two, if you're making it, uh, um, trying to compare, it's 15,948 versus 16,272. So you, will, you save money 
if the terms is shorter, um, even though it's less money you're paying on a monthly, but at the end of the, at the end of the term you save if you take a shorter term and pay more on a monthly basis. So it, it's astounding. Be cautious about taking an auto loan term of five years or more. So the longer the term is, the more you tie it in with the loan and the more interest you end up paying in the long run. Next slide. Be aware of car title loans. I don't know if anybody have an experience with that. I don't understand what that is, but I'll explain. You risk losing your car if you cannot pay. They can be costly loans. This is an example that, that, that's very clear. Um, basically what, what, what um, car title loans are is that you using your car as collateral so that you could get cash. Basically like a home equity, but in the car world, the vehicle world. But normally the, when those, these things happen, they come with a very hefty price. Um, they give you an example. First month, let's say the loan is $500 that you're trying to get. The, the interest is, is, is in dollar amount. You have to pay $100 in interest for me giving you the $500 loan. So that is technically a 20%, um, which equals to $600. So if you continue to keep that money, that, that money and not pay it in full term and have to pay $100 of interest on a monthly basis. So after year one, this $500 loan will cost you $1,200 in interest, um, which equates to a 240% APR. So that's kind of like crazy. You, you pay double in interest, and, 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 and if you end up not being able to pay that loan, you risk of losing your car. So uh, it's called title loans. I don't know if anybody ever heard of that before or know anyone who have done it, but it's really uh, a situation that if you do it, have a plan to pay off that loan ASAP. Excuse me, is that one of those loans that you see on TV, like JG Network or something? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. You all welcome. Any other questions? Yeah, it's just the interest is more than the price, the, the monthly yeah. payment of the loan. I mean, that's just that is really crazy. And so, would it say on the application, tar, car title loan? Yes, it will say that. Yes. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. so yes, it is. Something to be aware of. Be aware of that, because um, again, it's for it's taking advantage of people. And basically, that's what I, I, I say. It's literally, you know, people are in a dire situation. They wanna, they wanna, you know, and then they end up having a debt that is too much for them. So, car title loans. Be aware of that. Again, you might have you, you risk of losing your car if you cannot pay, and the interest rate that you pay, and on the long run, it's, it's just ridiculous. Next slide. <clears throat> um, I think we're going to keep it, we're going to end it end here. That's slide, uh, that's 29th, right? Yeah, the reason I want to stop here, uh, hard stop, is because um, home equity and mortgage and a line of credit is, it's, it's a whole topic within itself. Um, a lot of math involved and then people who own a home, it's very important to understand, you know, what is really home equity, uh, how you build home equity. What's the advantage of having a home and you know because a lot of the time you know that's you know they call it the american dream it's really the american dream when you own a property because if if because there's something called appreciation and value there's something called equity within that property um I'm, i i I'm, a, I'm an example of it i purchased a home in long island a couple of years ago and i sold it i'm like wow in five years, that's how much money <laughs> that you could build in equity for just, yeah. you know, buying a property. And then, you know, it's a life changing situation. At the same time, it could work against you, depending on the where you purchase it. But it's always good to have a hard asset uh, in your portfolio. So we could, I just leave that um, at the end of um, for part two, so that we could go more in details about mortgages, home equity, and line of credit. Yeah. So any questions so far? on this particular topic and what we went over, the car loans, um, 
my objective doing this, this workshop is really to open people's eyes because a lot of the times we don't do the research ourselves and people do take advantage of you. I work for a bank. I'm, I, I shouldn't say that, but, <laughs> but it's the reality. It's the reality. You need to do your due diligence. You need to understand no money is free money. Right. Right. No money's free. <laughs> right. I, no I had money. no idea there was so many different types of loans. And, you know, I'll kind of go back to my question just earlier. Will, you know, will the loan document say what type of loan it is, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, understanding what that means. I mean, people will just see, you know, secured loan or, or unsecured and have no idea what it means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, it's you know the end stack. I like to mention installment loan is more. It's very simple. Forward, a term, yeah, the amount you pay pay for the within for the month and for the amount of period of time, and then that's it. So that includes your principal and interest. Very simple, for simple, mm -hmm. and you know, and most of the time you could pay it off earlier if your financial situation have changed. There's a clause that will allow you to pay it earlier. So so so, but valuable rates, you know. It's, not you know control that um so it's again good to know that even if you have a collateral <laughs> when they do their final ledger you could still be liable for some of the right. debt so those are the things that you know that are important to know very important thank you so much does anybody mm -hmm. else have any other questions for spencer no okay. thank you super helpful thank you thank you tanya thank you nicole all right. Thank you, everyone. So I will um, be sending out materials and I wish everyone happy holidays. Um, we, I also will be sending out a survey to find out what types of topics you would like to see us present in 2022. Um, some will definitely be on financial literacy, but um, you know, take a minute and fill out the survey so that um, we are responding to the needs that you have. Thank you all for taking the time to participate in today's workshop. And Spencer, as always, thank you for your knowledge and for taking the time to answer questions and be here with us. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Nicole and Tanya. Have a great day. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.